I recently made a video about zero factorial and why we define it to be one or how one can define factorials using gamma functions so that zero factorial equals one actually follows from the definition of factorial. Uh, but many people responded with an argument like this, saying that there is an easier way to argue why zero factorial has to be one, which is of that sort. So let's see if that's right. Their argument goes as follows. We usually define n factorial as n times n minus one times dot 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 times two times one, or recursively as one factorial is one. And then for larger factorials, n plus one factorial would be the previous factorial times n plus one. And uh, that way we can build all the factorials. If so, then either way we have this formula that n plus one factorial is n factorial times n plus one, or that n factorial is n plus one factorial divided by n plus one. And when you plug in n equals zero in this formula, what we get in this formula, we get that one factorial is zero factorial times one, or in this formula, that zero factorial is one. And uh, therefore, zero factorial is one, right? And this is clearly wrong because these formulas are not valid for n equals zero. And when we plug in values in formulas that are not accepting those values, where these formulas are not defined, then we can get nonsense. So uh, these formula came from uh, the definition, and the definition is only for n bigger or equal to one. The same way that here, I cannot plug in zero because this formula does not contemplate the number n equal to zero. It just makes no sense. Then it makes no sense here to plug n equal zero. And when we plug n equal zero here, we may get nonsense. So what is actually happening is that you are defining zero factorial to be one to retrofit it so that it extends the values of these formulas to n equals zero, which is fine, but you are defining zero factorial so that this also works for n equals zero. However, as I said, plugging in values into formulas where those formulas are not defined at that value can be very dangerous. So if this works for you, how about let's just do n equals minus one. What happens if I put n equals minus one in here? If I put n equals minus one, I get the zero factorial is minus one factorial times zero. How can this be one and to be equal to something times zero? Or uh, from that other formula, we get that minus one factorial is zero factorial over zero, so minus one factorial has to be one over zero. In no sense, one can be one over zero times zero, so this makes absolutely no sense, and plugging in n equals minus one in this formula is no better than plugging in n equals zero into this formula because it is not defined at either value.